So question one then. The first question, paper one of the 2021 National 5 resource paper. Little too much question, vectors. Calculate the magnitude. There's the notation for the magnitude. Those two lines either side of it, meaning the, like the absolute value, just the size part. What's the magnitude of the vector d? And here it is written as a column vector, so you can see the three components. And of course, that just means you'd be using Pythagoras in three dimensions, because the three components just tell you how far you go from the start to the finish of this vector. So that means you would go one in the x direction. If I put x, y into the plane, that negative four means instead of going this way for four, you're going to come this way for four. So I've gone one that way. I've gone four towards me, so I'll just put a positive four there. And of course, that's meant to be a right angle because it's meant to be in three dimensions. And then you go eight straight up. That's where you finish. And of course, you've gone eight straight up. So that's eight straight up from that line. Those were both right angled moves. This is the vector you want here. That's the vector D. How long is that line? Well, you've got two right angle triangles. There's a right angle triangle and that's actually the longest side because that's the right angle. So to get this, you'd square them and add them. That's the right angle here, so that's the longest side. So to get this side, you'd square these two and add them. Well, that was already the one squared and the four squared. So you just square all three of them. But you knew that anyway, so you could just have gone straight in with that. So rather than putting this squared equals, I'll just put the big square root. And it'll just be square the components. Which you would have done just straight away immediately. You'd have seen that and just done that. And if you'd just written those three squared, you'd have got the first mark. And then finishing it off gets the other mark. So now it's just work it out. One squared. Negative four makes no difference. Squared is 16. And then a 64. That's going to come to 60, 80, 70, 81. Which means that the magnitude of D is going to be the square root of 81, which is 9. That's the mark. Then in question two, for another two marks, evaluate this, it says. Subtract these two numbers. Subtract these two mixed numbers. Now, you should just subtract them the way they are, because after all, five and a half just means you've got a five and you've got a half, and you're going to take away a one and a two sevenths. You can do them in any order you like. So just do the whole numbers first. Five take away the one is four, and then do the half take away the two sevenths. Now, you may well put that down separately as something over and then something over the same number. But once you've got them over the same number, the same denominator, that's going to be the denominator of the answer. So in order to subtract those two fractions, you'll need to find something they'll both change into. You can only subtract things which are the same. Well, 14 is the first number they both go into. 2 times 7 is 14, so 7 ones are 7. 7 times 2 is 14, so 2 twos are 4. Now getting the 14, that was a mark. And then finishing it off, 7 take away 4. Well, you had to get the 7 to 4. 3 fourteenths, that's the final mark. Now, you could have changed them into single fractions, into improper fractions. And that's what you would have to do if you were multiplying and especially dividing, because it would be simpler doing it that way. But in this case, it's just going to involve more work and take longer. If you were, then you'd have had to say, well, how many halves is that altogether? Well, five twos are ten, so there's ten halves there. Plus another one, that's eleven. How many sevenths have I got? Well, there's seven and another two is nine. And I've not got anything yet. Then you'd have to change them both into the same denominator, right? Out of 14. So that'd be that mark. Now you've got to change the tops. You're going to end up with bigger numbers than these. 7 times 11, 77. 2 times 9, 18. And now that subtraction is a lot worse than that one. 4 away from 7, 18 away from 77. Well, that's a 959. And at that point, they're giving you that mark. Maybe they're just feeling sorry for you because you took that route and you've probably done enough work already because you've certainly done a lot more than you had to do there. But you shouldn't really be leaving the answer like that. It should be going back the way you found it. This was a specific reason that you needed the answer in as an improper fraction, like an index, for instance, where you had to see the power in the root. But in this case, no. 
If there were in mi as mixed numbers before, they should be mixed numbers in the end, so you'd have to figure out how many 14s are in 59. Then you would arrive at 4, with 3 left over. So the mark should really be there, but they're letting you off and giving you it there. And so question three, but for three marks this time, expand and simplify this expression. Well, there's only one multiplication here. That 2x is to multiply everything in the bracket. That's why they're grouped together waiting to get multiplied. But here there's a bracket times a bracket. That's because both of them want to multiply both of them. So the 6x wants to multiply them both and the 5 wants to multiply them both. Now you could spell that out and say, well, that means you've got 6x times the bracket minus 5 times the bracket, but then that's going to take another line, and this one will have been finished by then, so it'll get a wee bit bored. So it'd be better if you just put them all down together. Knowing that 6x wants to multiply them both, so it's 6x times x, 6x squared. 6x times 3, 18x. The 5 times the x, but minus. Minus 5x. The 5 times the 3, but minus minus 15, then 2x times the 4, that's 8x, and then 2x times the x, 2x squared, but minus, plus times minus, minus. Now there's two marks there. You're good. What it says is one mark for doing one of them and one mark for doing the other one, even though it's not really equal in the amount of work between the two of them. But there you go anyway. Now it's just a case of tidy it up. So what types of terms have we got? X squared terms, there's just the two of them. Six take away two, four. X terms, ah. You've got three away, five away from that, so that's three, onto that's 21. Number terms, well, you've only got the minus 15. And that's the final mark.